I think at this point, a few of you might be a little confused as to what really happened with our audio recording here. And so in this video, I'm going to talk briefly about digital audio systems, about recording into them, and how in Soundation we could fix a problem like this. The first thing is that we can't fix this problem. We can't take these squared off peaks to our audio signal and suddenly make them be something smooth and curvy like a traditional signal would look. Once it's recorded in like that, there's no real fixing that. And I mentioned, very, even if we turn this down, top. all right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop. Even if I turn that down, we can still hear those additional artifacts in the signal. Okay, and that's not something that we probably want with the human voice. We have effects that can mimic this behavior, and I'd always recommend recording in lower and using those audio effects because in that situation, we have more control. And we can always choose whether we want the effect or we don't want the effect. In this situation, we can't make that choice. In digital systems, there have to be boundaries. And let's say that our boundaries are between zero and one. There can be millions of choices between zero and one, but once we cross one, it's been crossed. We've had a breach and the computer has to try to interpret that extra energy. And the way the computer attempts to interpret that extra energy is by just redistributing it back into the signal at kind of random locations. And it's because of that randomness that this sounds so incredibly harsh. In the past, it's always been recommended that you record in as loud as possible without hearing audible distortion. In a totally analog system, that's true. You'll set your preamp levels pretty high, all of this stuff, and that's because you're trying to avoid the audibility of things like wire hum or things like tape hiss, okay? That background noise that for a listener would be really annoying if they had to listen to that all the time. And that's referred to as the signal to noise ratio. In a digital system, the noise floor or that additional hiss or hum or everything else is so incredibly low. The preamps are really clean, and that's one of the great advantages to digital systems, actually, is the fact that that ratio is so low. Some people still prefer a little bit of that additional sound, a little bit of that hiss and hum. But if we're going for something truly clean, purely clean, a digital system is the way to go. Now, how are we going to address this problem? Well, you'd think we could go into settings, edit settings, and just turn the level down here, but that's not really going to work. And again, this has to do with making our decision at the source. So what I'd have to do is I'd have to go down here into my system preferences, go into sound here, go into input, and bring this level way down, which is what I've done here. Okay, when we look at the edit settings, that's kind of taking this value here and then scaling it. So if we're really up high and we try to still scale it down very low, we're still going to get some uh, digital distortion. So what I'll do is just go into this input level. I'll turn it way, way down for the sake of example. And now what I can do is record in something else on channel 2. This is my second pass at a recording inside of Soundation. I'm gonna to try to be very dynamic with my voice. Okay, great. Notice the difference of look in these waveforms. It's obvious, okay? We can see something that looks rather natural here. There are no clip peaks at the top, and you can also see that I was quiet in some places and loud in others. And so now if we listen back to this, this is my second pass at a recording inside of Soundation. I'm going to try to be very dynamic with my voice. I want you to notice that I can turn up this fader very high or very low. And it's not like when I turn it up louder, we start to hear this additional hiss or hum. Nothing like that at all. And that's the beauty of the digital system. We can work at pretty low levels and turn things up later, control things a bit later. All right, so that's the way that you're going to go in and fix that problem if you ever have that and you're working with your built-in microphone. If you have an audio interface, obviously turn down the input level at that stage, and that should help to address some of those problems. The other setting we didn't talk about at all is the buffer size here. And I just want you to look at these numbers, okay? 2048 up to 8192. And now let's look at another audio application that's standalone doesn't run through the internet, 
And notice these numbers go from 32 to 1024. That is a huge difference. And again, this has to do with either working in standalone or working through your internet browser. And really the buffer size just has to do with how long is the computer going to delay you inputting something into it. So let's say that we were playing something in on our keyboard into the computer, which is something we have the ability to do. Okay, inside of something like this application, we could set this down really low. And so if we also have drums playing in the background or we have uh, a guitar part or whatever playing in the background, this is gonna be almost totally seamless. We can play in with time. It's gonna hit it almost exactly right when we click it. This number is so small that you won't be able to hear a difference. Inside of Soundation, we don't have that same luxury. It has to be a bit higher. The computer needs that time. And if we were to set this number to something really low, we'd probably have crashes quite frequently. For our purposes, this isn't that important and you can kind of set it wherever you want, but it is something I want you to be aware of and to again, see that difference between Soundation, which is running inside of your browser and something that running uh, completely standalone. All right, thanks a lot.